Hi, I'm Arden Kawin, and today I want to talk to you about belting. So a member of my virtual studio wrote in, her name is Donna, and she wanted to know, is it enough just to stay in a really consistent low support and be really free without tension in order to achieve a healthy belt? The answer to the question is no. Now, maintaining a really consistent and reliable, strong support that does not leave you is foundational and not having tension and stretching and reaching and pushing up to reach that high belt is also foundational. But assuming that you have understanding of those things, you really know how to keep your support consistent and low, and you really have understanding of keeping the open sensation in the throat and in the jaw and in the soft palate without grabbing or tensing, then there are some other techniques that can help you achieve a higher belt. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about four of those things, and I'm also going to assume that you already know what a really consistent and reliable support is. If you don't, go watch my video on Apojo on my blog, because that will give you a really solid idea of what it means to get into this really consistent and low support in the lower part of your body and assuming that you've already investigated various tensions that you may have in the throat, in the neck, in the jaw area, and begun to undo those, especially with that solid support. Because when you have solid support, the body doesn't feel like it needs to support the sound anywhere else by going to tension. So those things are, are pretty linked and related. So assuming that you have both of those things down, here are four tips that are gonna help you to find a healthier belt in a more comfortable way in the higher part of your voice. The first thing to remember is that not all voices are meant to do all things. Your voice is part of your body, everybody's body is built differently, so one person might be able to belt to an E or an F sharp or a G, an octave and a half above middle C, and maybe your body is not built to do that. And guess what? It doesn't mean that that singer is a better singer than you are, it just means that her body or his body is built to do something different. So let's get out of the compare and despair thing right away and start to pay attention to what it is that my body was built to do and I'm gonna use the tools to maximize that potential. Second tool, there are different shapes for rising keys. And what I mean by that is, as your pitch rises, as you get into the higher part of your chest voice, the inside space needs to change to accommodate the higher pitches. And what I mean by inside space is the inside space of your soft palate and what your jaw is doing to facilitate that. So if your jaw is nice and soft, then your soft palate can really stretch and get up there. And we need that because as the pitch rises, we need a feeling of tilt. So the feeling of a cube, if you can imagine the inside space inside your mouth is a cube. And the reason I like a cube is because a cube has depth. It's three dimensional. So imagine the inside of the shape of your mouth is a cube and it's the points of a square that go like this and then internally too. So the back corners of the cube are those little nubbies behind your molars, like if you had wisdom teeth where those would have been, that's the back part of the cube. So when we're just talking normally, the inside cube of this resonating space is just on a lateral angle. However, as we rise in pitch, we need to tilt this cube so that we feel a higher stretch of the soft palate rising and coming up forward and so that we feel the jaw softening down at the same time. So it feels like this, okay? As you rise, you need more of that tilt. The next tool is something I call dumb jaw, smart tongue. So this is what's gonna facilitate you being able to tilt, okay? If your jaw is crunching those vowels and crunching those consonants and getting all up in there to manipulate those words, then it creates a sort of holding and a sort of tension that means that the soft palate cannot actually balloon and stretch in the manner that we want it to. So we want a feeling of the jaw just being dumb and soft and not getting involved when it doesn't have to and letting the tongue make the vowels and the consonants. So for example, if I was gonna say, gonna go, in singing, I'm gonna drop my jaw and let my tongue do it. Gonna go, gonna go. I don't need my jaw for that at all, and so it enables me to stay in that big open place that I'm gonna need when I'm singing. 
the last tool I think is the most foundational and the most helpful. The reason why so many of you have problems getting into that higher part of your chest voice is because you take the larynx up with you. So to help and to not get into that squeeze of the larynx pulling up and rising as the pitch does, when you're in that part of your voice, if you can think of the vowel uh, U-H, like the word ugly or hug, all the time, let all of your vowels be informed by the shape and the space of uh. So instead of me saying, so I say happy birthday, right? Instead of me singing happy birthday to you, and that is so squeezed and so uncomfortable because my larynx is like way up there. But if I can sing happy birthday and let all those vowels be informed by uh, which to me feels like a trapdoor opening and just everything softening and opening down, if I can keep all my vowels in that place, it's much more comfortable. Happy birthday to you. It it's feels much better to me. And you can hear I'm still singing in the actual vowels that I'm singing on, but I have a lot more open space and it's not so pinched and squeezed and uncomfortable. And it's that pinch and squeeze that causes the unhealthy things to happen, like nodes, like vocal hemorrhage, etc. So if you can think of this whole mechanism and area when you get into the higher part of your chest voice, as being involved in one of those Chinese finger games. You know, you put your fingers in it, but then you can't get it out, right? And when you pull your fingers down, it elongates and lengthens the space, right? So we want a feeling of uh in the lower pharynx area, like that trap door going this way. I don't want you to put pressure on your larynx. I don't want you to depress it. I just want you to open down and allow that larynx to sit and thinking uh vowel will help you do that. And at the same time, you're in that tilt of the cube and you're pulling up in the opposite direction. So you have this length, this open sensation that allows this free vibration of energy and sound and air that's not being cumbered on either end by the larynx hiking up or by the soft palate pushing down. So I'm gonna demonstrate all of this in what I call my Miley Cyrus tool. It's really just, I like to use her song Wrecking Ball because it sits on the same note in the chorus for a while so you can really hear how a singer is uh, using these tools. The song was written for the chorus to start on B flat, so I'm gonna demonstrate starting on B flat. And I have to stand up to do this because for me to really have the full support and healthy way of singing in the higher part of my chest voice, I need my whole body beneath me and I need to stand. So what I want you to feel is very low consistent support very soft and open sensation in the larynx and that feeling of tilt. I came in like a wrecking ball. I never hit so hard in love. Do you hear how I'm, I'm singing ah, but I've got so much uh in it. All I wanted was to break your walls. Not walls, walls. Keeps me really far back. All you ever did was wreck me. So I'm feeling high and soft and low at the same time. So now for shits and giggles, let's take the song up a step. So we're gonna transpose it up by a step to C. It's gonna be a little higher, and you're gonna see how I'm employing dumb jaw, smart tongue. Every time you feel like you've got a string of consonants, see how much of them the tongue can do without the jaw. So for example, Came in like a, like a. I don't need my jaw. Came in like a, don't need it. Came in like a wrecking ball. It feels dumb. It should feel stupid. It's not gonna feel like super exact. Let it feel lazy. The lazier you can feel, the easier it is to stay in that space and hang on to that support in a really consistent way. I came in like a wrecking ball. I never hit so hard. You see, I'm, I'm even, you can watch the shape of my face. I'm getting further back. All I wanted was to break your walls. All you ever did was wreck me. So it allows me to be in that higher part of my voice without feeling any strain because I'm keeping everything low and soft. Now, there's a lot of other things that go into healthy singing. These are just some tips that I know that have worked for me in terms of getting into the higher part of my chest voice. And you know what? 
I mix there most of the time. I don't even take my chest voice up to E flat, even though I can. Just because you can doesn't mean that every song supports that or that every song needs that. So the main takeaways from today are number one, not all voices are built to do all things. I'm sorry, it's just the truth. When your instrument is your body, you've got to work with what you are given. And if you cannot belt up to an F or an F sharp, that is totally cool. Don't beat yourself up over it. Get the best tools you can to maximize the potential of your instrument. And then accept your voice for what it is. Remember, the world needs the voice that you have. So get to know it, enjoy it, love it, and use your tools. If you found this helpful, go onto my website. There's a ton of other blogs on breathing and support, motivational things for singers, business advice for singers. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for email updates to become a member of my virtual voice studio. You'll get instant access to a powerful video training called Be a More Consistent Singer. And you'll get first dibs on singing workshops and master classes, as well as access to studio member only tips, tools, and insights I don't share anywhere else. So come join the community. It's been my mission to gather a compassionate rather than competitive group of singers, and we're all here to reach the potential of our singing together and support ourselves to that end. I'm Arden Kaywin.